Hi everybody, it's Marty and hope everyone's doing really, really good. Let me paint a scene for you. Just imagine this date in abbreviated form. I'm just going to refer to it as 1MAA. Or you might say that's millennium after Armageddon. So that's one year past Armageddon. Or in other words, the start, the first day of the new millennium. So what can we expect? It's difficult to say at this time because it means that we've got to just imagine ourselves at that time. But say we can do that and that we are one of these Armageddon survivors and that we're there with a lot more of the Armageddon survivors. What do you think is going to be the situation? Well, this is what I think. And you can beat me down to the ground if you don't agree. Don't mind. Beat me to the ground if you wish. Elvis won't mind. I think there'll be lots and lots of hugging, lots and lots of congratulations amongst the Armageddon survivors. I think they won't have witnessed the mass annihilation of billions. I believe that they will be put in a position where they don't actually see that. Because that's in keeping what, with what I've come to know about God. You know, I mean, did Lot really see what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? No, because he was walking away from it. It was only the ones that looked back that probably had that brief subliminal glimpse of that mass destruction and that almighty power that God unleashed on Sodom and Gomorrah at that time. So there we are. We're amongst the Armageddon survivors and we're congratulating each other. And then somebody in their wisdom says, do you realise this is the first day of the millennium? And everyone looks around and go, and is like taken back by it because they've just realised that they've passed into the new order, the first day of the new order. That's powerful within itself, even just to say it. I don't see myself there. I don't want to be presumptuous, but I'm pretty sure I'll be amongst those that don't make it. But anyway, that's a side issue. But then out of this group, someone, a wise person, more of an elder or maybe an older person, you know, someone experienced within the scriptures. I don't necessarily mean that this group is the Jehovah's Witnesses, but... I'm only just imagining it is because that's what I've come to know about their doctrine. But you can imagine it can be any other group that is identified and passes through this system to the new system. So you pick your own group. But for the sake of argument, I will stick by them. So someone, a wise person, he says, the education work starts tomorrow. And the others, they say, what do you mean? They say, well... Uh, the dead, they start to rise as from tomorrow, the first of the dead, and that we have this obligation to educate them, to let them know what happened in history, to let them know about Jehovah's kingdom and all heavenly things that have now taken place. And they are taken back by it at first and they think, well, yeah, well, that's, that's right, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's why we were Bible scholars, surely. It wasn't for nothing, was it, that we were studying the scriptures and that we were able to remain loyal? So, this is my opinion about when, when the dead will start to rise from the grave. Now, I do have someone on YouTube that is extremely knowledge about, knowledgeable sorry, about this subject, and he has given me a different opinion about this. And... I just want to say that this is my version of events, and if he wants to shoot me down, he can do. So, I believe that the day after Armageddon, that's the first day of the millennium. I believe that the first of the dead will start to rise during that time. I believe that there's no fixed time for how long it takes for all of the dead that have gone to their graves throughout history to be finally brought back to life. I don't think there's a fixed time for that. But what I do believe is 
that by the end of that millennium period, all the education work will have been completed and that nobody, nobody will be left in any doubt as to what happened at Armageddon, what happened throughout history, who the God uh, is that brought this destruction. So I think that there'd be great education would be going on and it'd be so powerful to those that have just come back that it will take some time for them to digest what they're being told. So it could actually take nearly a thousand years. And after that thousand year period, I actually believe that man will only be brought back to relative perfection. I know I keep going on about relative perfection, but that's just what I believe. It has to be relative perfection and not true perfection. If it was true perfection, then nobody at the end of the millennium period would ever falter. But the Bible says that people will falter because Satan has let loose. And when Satan's let loose, he's given this final challenge and he unleashes it on all of mankind after the thousand year period. And some fail it. I believe that the ones that will fail it will probably be the ones that maybe have come back from the dead and they've just formed independent thinking during that thousand year period. So that's my version of events. I'm not saying I'm right. I don't know if I'm right, I don't know if I'm wrong. But that's how I perceive it. And someone on YouTube has said, no Martin, that is not so. He said that the dead come back at the end, right at the end of the thousand year period. And I said, uh, not verbally, in a typed message, I said, well, that's not what I have come to know about God. And let me explain what I mean by that. Well, does God not always give mankind ample opportunity and time to reconcile his ways and find the path of righteousness? So if I was to believe that this person was right, I would have to believe that the God that I've come to know has changed his formula that he has suddenly thought, you know what, I'll let Satan out of that abyss at the end of that thousand year period and I will then resurrect everybody right at that time so that they can be met with this great big onslaught of a devil. I don't think that that would be in keeping, that wouldn't be loving and that wouldn't be in keeping with what I know about God. And I will go back in history. He gave everybody during the flood time, ample time, didn't he, to listen to Noah. Example one, he get, and example two is that Sodom and Gomorrah were even given a chance. He, they needn't have been destroyed because God had said, well, find one and I'll spare them. Example three, our time. There's been so many years that we've had to reconcile our relationship with God. Some have done, some haven't. And I can go on and go on and go on. There's just numerous examples of why I believe that God would not, would not bring chaos at the end of the millennium. That the only thing that makes any sense is that during the thousand years, all the dead would be systematically raised from their graves. Then they will be educated. After the education work is complete, the thousand year millennium period has ended, Satan will be released from the abyss, from his prison. He will then do what he has to do. And he will tempt away a lot, as we know. I believe the ones he tempts away will probably be the ones that are on the fringes, perhaps the resurrected ones that just haven't grasped what this new order is all about. Now, I know I'm going to be shouted down for this, but if I don't stick up for what I believe in, then what am I? You know, am I a coward? Well, I don't want to be a coward. I want to stick up for what I believe in, and that's how I feel about this, quite passionate. So I'd like to thank you for listening. Bye-bye.